Hello and welcome everyone. We are excited to have you here for part 2 of our Amazon Aurora upgrade series and today we are covering major version upgrades to Amazon Aurora MySQL version 3 using the new RDS Blue Green deployments feature with a quick demo and best practices. My name is Shagun Aurora and I am a database specialist solutions architect here at AWS. And today I am also joined by my colleagues Umesh and David. Hi everyone, I'm Umesh Resta and I'm a database solution architect with AWS. And I am David Laboya, a database specialist solutions architect and I also specialize in Amazon RDS, Amazon Aurora and other relational database technologies. Welcome to another edition of the Amazon Aurora upgrade series. In the first edition, we discuss Amazon Aurora version 1 end of life and the upgrade options to Amazon Aurora version 2. The topic for today is Amazon Aurora version 2 end of life. And today we will talk about how you can upgrade to Amazon Aurora MySQL compatible edition version 3, which is MySQL 8.0 compatible. We will also show you a demo so you can see how the upgrade process works. With that being said, let's get started. On the agenda today, We'll talk about the current Aurora MySQL version options and the available upgrade options. We'll also be talking about the new Amazon Blue Green deployment feature. Then we'll show you a demo and talk about the best practices for when performing an upgrade. Let's take a look at how Amazon Aurora MySQL versions correlates with the MySQL community versions and how long the Aurora major versions remain available for. Amazon Aurora major versions remain available at least until the community end of life for the corresponding community version. Aurora MySQL version 1, which is compatible with the MySQL community version 5 and 6, was deprecated on the 28th of February 2023. And Amazon Aurora version 2 which is compatible with the MySQL community version 5.7 is set to reach its end of life on the 31st of October 2024. Amazon Aurora version 3, which is compatible with the MySQL community version 8.0, is currently available and the end of life for this version has not been determined yet at the time of this recording. And as we can see on this slide, the end of life timelines is no earlier than these dates. This means that the dates here can be pushed further, but the deprecation would not happen before any of these dates. This can help you to initially plan your upgrade timelines before the version reaches its end of life. Amazon Aurora provides customers with various options to perform both major and minor version upgrades. We will look at some of the common options we have and also cover one of our recently launched features. In our last video, we talked about the upgrade options available for Aurora MySQL. We talked about the in-place upgrade, the snapshot and restore method, and the cloning option. For the in-place upgrade, we talked about how it is a fast and convenient upgrade method. It maintains the same endpoints, but a downside to using this is that you will experience downtime during the upgrade and this downtime can be long and unpredictable, which can risk the safety of your production workloads. With the Aurora cloning method, you can create a staging environment and the limitation to using this is that you have to set up a replication between your staging environment and the production environment. You have to do this in order to allow the staging environment in, to be up to date with the production environment. You also have to perform replication checks before manually performing the switchover. Overall, this creates a lot of heavy lifting and it requires considerable planning due to manually setting up the replication and planning the switchover. With the snapshot and restore method, you create a new cluster. So this means that you have a new endpoint 
It also comes with a lot of downtime when compared to other upgrade options. Since a major version upgrade can introduce significant changes, we highly recommend our customers to thoroughly test the upgrade using either the snapshot and restore method or using the Aurora cloning method. However, the focus for this presentation is the new blue-green deployment feature. This was created to ensure that you no longer have to make a choice between availability and security or performance of your database. With the blue-green deployment feature, you can create a green or a staging environment and make your changes to your database cluster in this green environment without affecting your production workloads. This option greatly reduces risk and downtime because you can thoroughly test changes in the green environment and whenever you're ready, you can switch over the environment to promote the green environment to become the new production environment. The switch over typically takes under a minute with no data loss. There are no new endpoints created and no need for application changes. Making updates like major version upgrades and schema modifications can be challenging. It requires significant time and resource to execute while minimizing downtime and performing extensive testing. In addition to the downtime, Direct changes to your production environment can negatively impact your database performance as well. We announced a feature for our Amazon Aurora and RDS MySQL database, which lets you make updates to your database safely and with minimal downtime. The blue-green deployment is a fully managed feature for Aurora with MySQL compatibility, RDS for MySQL, and RDS for MariaDB that makes the database updates safer simpler and faster. With blue-green deployment feature, the switch over to production databases are as fast as a minute with zero data loss compared to hours when using the in-place upgrade. The blue-green deployment allows you to perform a major or minor version upgrade, change database parameters, make schema changes, perform instance scaling, and perform maintenance updates in the staging or green environment without impacting your production or your blue environment. This feature also provides switch over guardrails that helps to ensure that database promotion happens safely. So with just a few clicks of a button in the RDS console, you can create a production ready green environment. And once your green environment is ready for promotion, you can initiate a switch over with one additional click. It is important to note that workloads with long running transaction and workloads that have large replica lags may take longer to switch over. To perform an upgrade using the blue green feature, please choose the latest Aurora MySQL version. So how does blue green deployment work? In the Amazon RDS console, by using a few clicks, RDS will automatically create a green environment that mirrors your blue environment, including any in-region read replicas. This feature will keep your green primary database up to date with your blue primary using logical bin log replication. Once the green environment is provisioned and available, you can begin to make changes and test your changes. You can also add or remove replicas in your blue and green environment. However, as a best practice, we recommend that you make minimal to no changes to your blue environment configuration when using the blue-green deployment. This is to ensure that the switchover is more straightforward. Once you confirm you are ready to promote your changes to production, you can then initiate the switchover. We also have the blue-green deployment switchover guardrails, which Shagun will discuss in more details here. And this will help you to ensure that your database switchover goes according to plan. We will also see the switchover in action as part of the demo today. 
since any writes happening to your blue environment are also being replicated in your green environment, instead of taking hours, depending on your workload, you can complete your switch over in under a minute. And all of this is done without any application change. After the promotion has been completed, RDS will not delete your old blue environment. So it is important for you to delete your old blue environment by yourself in order to reduce cost. At this time, I'll pass it over to Umez, we will present the blue green deployment demo. And also, if you are interested in a full step by step demo of the in place upgrade, snapshot restore, and upgrade using Aurora cloning, please revisit our first video in this series. Thank you, David. Before I start with the demo, I wanted to mention that the link of our previous demo for in place upgrade, upgrade using snapshot and restore and clone is provided at the end of this video. So please feel free to check those out. Now let's start with the demo. I've created an environment called Aurora Lab 1. And if you see in the configuration section, this is Aurora MySQL version 2.11.1 which is compatible with MySQL 5.7. But since blue-green deployment is also supported for MySQL version 5.6, you can use this to upgrade your 5.6 cluster because of the end of life. Now, as a prerequisite for the blue-green deployment, the build log format parameter needs to be row. So if you look into this DB cluster parameter group, and search for the bill of format, you can see that the bill of format is set to row. Now let's go ahead and select the Aurora Lab 1 cluster. Go to Accents tab and click on Create Blue Green Deployment. Under the Blue Green Deployment identifier, give it a name. I'm going to name it as Measure Version. And then under the Engine Version, we have a couple of options. You can either keep your cluster to the current version or you can also do minor version upgrades just in case you want to stay with 5.7 but choose a higher minor version. In this case, I'm going to perform a major version upgrade. So I'm going to select the latest 8.0 that's available and then choose the parameter. I'll keep those parameters as default. And then at the bottom, you can see the estimated monthly cost for green database. Once you verify all this, please go ahead and click on create a staging environment. It will take some time to set this staging environment and upgrading. So let me pause the video and come back when it's available. Now you can see that the green environment is available. And if you go to the writer instance, go to the configuration tab, you can confirm that the new MySQL engine version is 8.0. Now at this point, you can connect to it you can run test and once everything looks good, you can go to the console and then do a switch over. Before you switch over a blue green deployment, we recommend that you check the value of two metrics within Amazon CloudWatch. The first one is replica lag and the second one is database connections. The replica lag metrics is used to identify the current replication lag on the green environment. And for a smooth and timely switch over, you make sure that this value is close to zero. And database connection metric is used to estimate the level of activity on the blue-green deployment. So make sure that the value is at an acceptable level for your deployment before you switch over. If the performance inside is turned on, DB load is a more accurate metric. Now to do a switch over, select your blue-green deployment, go to the actions, and then click on switch over. And on this page, you'll see a switch over summary where it basically compares your blue environment with the new green environment. And you can also see that your new engine version is Aurora MySQL 8.0. You can check the parameter groups, VPCs, and so on. Now on the timeout setting, you can set a switch over timeout period between 30 seconds and one hour. If the switch over takes longer than your set time, then any changes that you have made are rolled back. By default, it is set to five minutes and I'm going to keep it that way. And once everything looks good on this page, we'll now click on switch over. 
the status now will change to switching over now during switchover there are multiple steps that are happening on the back end let me briefly go over those first RDS performs guardrail checks to verify if the blue green environment are ready for switchover it stops the new write operations drop connections to the DV instances and doesn't allow any new connection it waits for replications in the green environment to catch up with the blue environment it also renames the DB instances in both environments. RDS renames the DB instances in the green environment to match the DB instances in the blue environment. For example, if the name of the blue environment DB instance is MyDB and the name of the green environment DB instance is MyDB Green, then the name of the DB instance in the green environment will be changed to MyDB during the switchover. RDS renames the DB instance in the blue environment by appending dash old n to the current name where n is a number. For example, if the name of blue environment DB instance is mydb, after switchover it will be renamed as mydb dash old one. It also renames the endpoints in the green environment to match the corresponding endpoints in the blue environment so that you don't have to change endpoints in your application. It then allows the connections to databases in both environments and allows write operations on the primary database instance in the new production environment. Now, in case a switchover fails, you are also able to see detailed logs in the log and event sections of your RDS console, at which point you can diagnose the issue and try to perform the switchover again as there are no limits to that. Here, we can see that the switchover has completed successfully. We can also see that the topology has changed and now there are two separate clusters uh, which has been renamed as part of the switchover actions. So in this case, we have an Aurora Lab 1-old1 cluster, which means that this is my blue environment. And if I click on that, go to configuration, I can see that my engine version is MySQL 5.7. And if I go back to my databases list, I can see that I also have Aurora Lab-1, which is my new green environment. And if I click on it, go to configuration, I can see that the engine version is MySQL 8.0. Now, at this point, you can make the decision of either keeping the blue environment available or you can go ahead and delete it just to make sure that it is not adding any additional cost. So I'm going to select it and then go to the actions and delete it. Now I'm not going to create any final snapshot. So I'll just go ahead and type delete me and then delete the environment. So this concludes the demo for major version upgrade using blue green deployment. Now, Sagun will go over some of the best practices for blue green deployment and performing the Mesa version upgrade. Thank you, and Sagun, over to you. Thank you, Umesh. Let's now have a look at some of the best practices related to RDS blue green deployments. So, firstly, when you have created your blue green deployment, there is really no time limit on how long you can keep your green environments running. Therefore, after you've done the major version upgrade on the green environment, take your time to thoroughly test that your database resources are functioning properly and efficiently after the upgrade. We do recommend that you keep your green environment read only, or if there is a need to enable writes on the green, do that with caution to make sure that there are no replication conflicts caused as a result. Now, as we know, during the switchover, database connections to both environments will be dropped. So identify the best time for this action, basically when the traffic is on the lower side in your production environment. Also keep in mind that switchover would only occur if instances in both environments are available in status and are also healthy and replicating. 
Next, there are some CloudWatch metrics that we recommend that you keep an eye on. This is not an exhaustive list, but are some of the important metrics to look at before the switchover. The first one is related to the replication between blue and green. And for that, you can look at the Aurora bin log replica lag metric that we also saw in the demo, which is to identify the current replication lag to the green environment. Now, during the switchover, there is a step to wait for the replication to catch up. So an idle time for switchover will be when this value is as close to zero as possible to reduce the overall downtime. And next, you can also look at the database connections metric, or if you have performance insights turned on, look at the DB load CloudWatch metric to estimate the level of database activity. This is because as writes will be halted during the switchover, so make sure the connections value is at an acceptable level for your business. And the last one to check will be for active transactions, as a lot of active transactions or any long running transactions such as active DDLs can increase your switchover time, which can result in a longer downtime for your workloads. And now once you've looked at the metrics and depending on how far the replica lag is and active transactions or active queries are, you can then specify an appropriate switchover timeout. As there are multiple steps performed during this time, so ensure you don't set it too aggressively. In case the switchover does take longer than the specified duration, then any changes are rolled back and no changes are made to either of the environments. And as we saw in the demo, the default switchover timeout is five minutes and the maximum is one hour. After the switchover now, to ensure that there are no stale writes happening on the blue environment, first make sure that you are using the Aurora cluster endpoints and not the instance endpoints on your application and also check to see that your client configurations don't increase the DNS cache time to live value beyond five seconds. Otherwise, applications may continue to send traffic to your blue environment. Lastly, please review limitations of the RDS Blue Green deployment feature in the AWS documentation to ensure it works as intended on your existing Aurora architectures. Let's now move on and have a look at some of the upgrade best practices to keep in mind when upgrading to Aurora version 3 compatible with MySQL 8. So starting with, we would like to know what are the changes or improvements in the target MySQL version. And for that, you can read about the upgrade considerations and tips in the MySQL 8 reference manual under the what is new section to see new features such as the new data dictionary, uh, which is going to be a most important one here, and also look at features that are deprecated or removed and check for any reserved keywords, deprecated data types, or changes to default parameter values. Then you can also run an assessment on your existing database to identify any upgrade issues using the MySQL check check upgrade command to analyze your existing Aurora MySQL 5.7 databases. Once you have reviewed the above information and are ready to begin testing, you can do so in a staging environment with the most recent copy of your data in production. And that can be done by either using a snapshot restore method or by creating an Aurora clone of your prod cluster. Once the restored cluster or the clone are in available status, you can then upgrade it to the target Aurora version 3 to test your database and application for compatibility with the new version. We recommend when you are when you are deciding on the target Aurora version 3, we recommend to pick the latest version at the time to take benefits of the latest features as well. Now, while testing the upgrade on the lower environment, if this upgrade fails for any reason, there will be a log file created to call out those issues. 
This log file is the upgrade prechecks.log and you will be able to view and download it from the logs and events section of your AWS RDS console. Once these errors have been corrected and you have successfully upgraded to the target version, the next step is going to be to perform load testing. Now this testing will vary for each workload, but most importantly, we should be covering the following points. So first we should run explain on the most important queries to check the updated query execution plan with MySQL 8 because of the introduction of the new data dictionary enhancements you may notice a change in the query execution plan and with this you can also review any new wait events that may be showing up in your performance insights dashboard if you have that option enabled in your Aurora cluster. And another aspect to check would be to ensure that the table statistics are updated by running the analyze table statement. Now continuing with some of the upgrade best practices, if you are using any custom database parameter groups then those are major version specific and this means that you will need to create new MySQL 8 compatible versions of your custom parameter groups and then you can apply any necessary custom values for the desired parameters. You can find more information about parameter comparisons in the Amazon Aurora documentation. However, an important call out here is with the lowercase table names parameter. Only if you've had a custom value for this parameter, then make sure to use the same value and set it at the time of cluster creation. Any change to the lowercase table names parameter will have no effect after the cluster is created. Next, as we have different methods to perform major version upgrade on your Aurora cluster, whether it be in-place upgrade, snapshot, restore, or using clones. But if you'd like to do this upgrade with reduced downtime and reduced risk as well, you can use the RDS blue-green deployment feature and test it by creating your own deployment using the AWS console or the CLI. Lastly, whether you are choosing the in-place upgrade or the RDS blue-green deployment, make sure to review the database activity when making the modification, which will impact the duration of the upgrade. So here we should be thinking of long-running transactions that are happening at the time of the in-place upgrade or the switchover by looking at show full process list query output. You should also look at the large history list length that you can check from the show engine InnoDB status query and the CloudWatch metrics like database connections and replica lag to ensure for a smooth upgrade with limited downtime duration. And with this, I'd like to conclude this session. These best practices are covered at a high level and will vary depending on the criticality of your workloads and application. Please reach out to your AWS teams if you need more assistance. We hope this session and the demo were helpful to plan your Amazon Aurora MySQL major version upgrades with the RDS blue-green deployment. I'd like to thank you for your time to go through this video and we wish you happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.